In this video, we're going to attempt to answer the question, are value stocks a safe haven during bear markets? My name is Kirby Arkundiff. I have a PhD from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'm a chartered financial analyst and a certified financial planner. I currently work both as a portfolio advisor and retirement strategist, and also as an adjunct professor of accounting and financial management for the University of Maryland Global Campus. This presentation is made in part in preparation for the Southwestern Finance Association meeting in New Orleans, Louisiana in March of 2022. So to answer our question, we're going to look at the performance of value versus growth stocks during the bear markets that have occurred since 1978. Since the answer to this question is going to be very dependent on where the bear market starts, we're going to rank our bear markets based on the valuation of the Wilshire growth over the Wilshire value index at the beginning of each pullback. The current growth value index is at 1.32. This has only been higher once, and that was during the dot-com bubble. The next highest uh, period of the growth versus value index occurred during the recession of 1982. And during both of these time periods, value stocks significantly outperformed growth stocks. Currently, the overall valuation as of August of 2021 of the U.S. market based on the Schiller P to E ratio and many other measurements is extremely high. If we look at the Schiller P to E ratio, we are up around 39. That's the price you pay for a dollar of earnings, where the earnings are averaged over the last five years. The only time the market has been valued higher than this was during the dot-com bubble, and our current valuations are quite a bit higher than at the beginning of the bubble that started the Great Depression, so-called Black Tuesday, and they are also higher than before the 1970s recessions and the attempt to fight inflation during that time period. So markets are very expensive today. So if we look at these past bear markets, we will have the dot-com bubble, the early 80s recession, the most recent COVID scare, uh, Black Monday, early 1990s recession, and the housing bubble. Our Wilshire Growth Value Index is ranked with the dot-com bubble at the top, close to 1.7, then the early 80s recession at 1.19. Again, current market conditions are between these two at around 1.3. Then we have the COVID scare of 1.1, Black Monday 1.03, early 90s recession 1.02, and the housing bubble is the only bubble that started where value stocks were valued higher than growth stocks. A bear market is defined as a drop of over 20%, so the early 90s recession was barely at that at 20%. The most brutal drop pullback for the S&P 500 was during the housing bubble at 56%, followed by the dot-com bubble of 49 Of course, tech stocks did much worse during this time period. And then we have Black Monday at 34% and the COVID scare at 30%. The time periods of these markets, dot-com bubble began in March of 2000 and lasted a brutal 31 months. The early 80s recession began in November of 1980, also lasted a long time period of 21 months. The next three uh, pullbacks were pretty short. The COVID scare only a month, Black Monday three months, early 90s recession only three months. The housing bubble was also pretty brutal starting in October of 2007 and lasting for an entire 17 months. So what is a value versus a growth stock? Well, value stocks have low earnings and revenue growth. They have cheap valuation measured by things like price to earnings ratio and book to market ratios, and they have a high dividend yield. Growth stocks, on the other hand, have high earnings and revenue growth, are revenue growth. In some cases, growth stocks may not have any earnings. They have expensive valuations, so very high P to E ratios, high market versus book values, 
and they pay low dividends are, in many cases, no dividends. If we look historically at the value versus growth index, we see that this peak during the dot-com bubble, again up here close to 1.7, and the second highest it has been during the time period we have data is right now about 1.32. So our time period looks reasonably like the dot-com bubble. The next highest period, again, was right before the 1982, or the early 1980s recession. So what happened during the dot-com bubble? Well, it was an extremely brutal pullback for growth stocks, which is not surprising since growth stocks were valued so highly, up around 1.7 versus value stocks. And during this pullback, which started in March of 2000 and went all the way to October of 2002, the S&P 500 dropped by around 50%. The growth stocks did far worse. If so, if we look at large cap, mid cap, and small cap growth stocks, they all dropped by over 60%. At the same time, large cap value stocks dropped by only 23%, and mid and small cap value stocks didn't drop at all. And you can see this graphically here. Here we're looking at the Wilshire 5000 growth and value indexes. Up at the top here we have small cap value stocks. They went up by close to 4% during a bear market. Mid cap value stocks went up by around 1% again during a bear market. Large cap value didn't do as well, dropping here by 23%. But all of the growth stocks down at the bottom dropped by over 60% during this time period. So during the dot-com bubble, you would have been very safe in value stocks. The fact that the small and mid-cap values stayed roughly the same and went up, and the large cap went down, can also be explained by looking at the Wilshire large cap versus small cap valuation at the beginning of the dot-com bubble. So the dot-com bubble was not only a tech and growth stock bubble, but it was also a large cap bubble. We saw a small version of this during 2020 after the COVID scare, and you can see at the end of 2020, small caps drastically outperformed large caps. Next, let's look at the bear market during the early 1980s recession. Uh, this recession was largely caused by the efforts of Paul Volcker at the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates and flight inflation in the United States. It started with a growth value ratio of around 1.2, so our current condition of 1.3 is between the beginning of this bear market and the dot-com bubble, which peaked out at 1.7. Uh, this bear market ran from November of 1980 to August of 82, reasonably long bear market, and the S&P 500, the 500 largest stocks in the United States, dropped by 27%. The requirement to be a bear market is a drop of over 20%, and due to differences in small and large cap stock performance, the Wilshire 5000, which includes not only the stocks in the S&P 500, but mid and small cap stocks, didn't show a bear market, so small and mid caps outperformed large caps. Um, value stocks outperformed again during this time period. If we look at small cap, mid cap, and large cap value stocks, they had returns of 12 and 1% and then negative 5 for the large caps. Uh, growth stocks again did far worse. If we look at mid cap, small cap, and large cap growth stocks, they underperformed by minus 11, minus 15, and minus 15% respectively. Graphically, again, we can look at the performance here of the Wilshire Growth versus Value Index, and our top three performers here are small cap value, mid cap value, and large cap value, and our worst performers are mid cap growth, small cap growth, and large cap growth. So the worst was negative 15% for large cap growth, and the best was small cap value at over 11%. If we look at a shorter time period, um, then the S&P 500 
bear market also shows a Wilshire 5000 bear market just running from June of 1981 to 1982. And again, during this time period, all value stock categories outperformed all growth stack categories. Their performance was again with small cap value stocks at only negative seven, and the worst with small cap growth at negative 27. So again here, small cap value only dropped by 7%. Small cap growth dropped by 27%. Um, the other negative performers again were both large cap and mid cap growth, which underperformed both large cap and mid cap value stocks. Next, let's look at the very brief COVID scare of 2020. The COVID scare of February 2020 only lasted a month, started with a modest growth to value ratio of 1.1. And during this pullback, there wasn't a terribly good correlation between value versus growth stocks. Uh, large cap growth and large cap value stocks both outperformed mid and small cap stocks. Best performance went to large cap growth with a negative 33% pullback followed by large cap value with a negative 35% performance and the worst to mid cap value with a negative 46 performance. So you can see large cap growth was here at the top and mid cap value was down at the bottom, but there wasn't a particularly good correlation with value versus growth performance. How about Black Monday of 1987, uh, the drop ran from August to November of 87, again, pretty brief. It started with a near parity situation, a growth value ratio of 1.03, and again, in this short case, saw a value outperformance, best performer was large cap value at negative 25%, and the worst small cap growth at negative 35% large cap growth and small cap value tied at negative 28. So once again, looking at this graphically, we can see that the top two performers were large and mid cap value with both around negative 25%. The worst performers were mid and small cap growth with negative 32 and negative 35%. And the mid performers largely tying were large cap growth and small cap value. So not a particularly strong value versus growth ratio, but there was a little bit of outperformance of value versus growth. The recession of 1990 was again a brief pullback um, during a mild recession at the end of the year in 1990. It once again started with a growth value ratio of near parity around one, S&P 500 only dropped by 20%, so it was barely a bear market, and it only ran from July to October of 1990. So during this brief pullback from near parity, the growth value ratio, there is little correlation between value versus growth stocks. Instead, there's a pretty good correlation on performance. Large cap stocks, both growth and value, drop by only around 14%, mid caps by 22% and small caps by 27 for value and 29 for growth. So during this time period, it's basically large cap, mid cap, and the worst performers are small cap, again with a range of negative 14% for the large caps, and the small caps do far worse at 20, negative 27 and negative 29% respectively. The housing bubble of 2007 and 2008 looks a lot different than the other pullbacks. And the reason for this is it started with a growth value index below parity of 0.74. This was a long and brutal pullback running from October of 2007 to March of 2008. And this was the only time period that there was a significant outperformance of growth versus value stocks. The top performers were large and mid cap growth with negative 49 and negative 54% respectively. Small cap growth and all categories of value stocks lost between 57 and 58%. So graphically, we have horrible performance here 
in three of the value categories at negative 57, negative 57, negative 57, and small cap growth is also around negative 57. The large and mid cap growth did better, but still pretty bad at negative 49 and negative 54. So a very brutal um, stock market bear. What about longer time periods that include bull as well as bear markets? How is value versus growth done? Well, we have studies over various time periods. Here's one from 1978 to 2014. And during that time period, value stocks outperform growth during two thirds of the years, but the performance is not nearly as significant as during some of the bear markets we discussed. So the main argument for value over growth, at least during the current time period, is the current growth over value ratio lies between the dot-com bubble and the early 80s recession. So during current market conditions, it seems highly likely that in the following years, value will outperform growth. So here we have the difference between the 10-year annualized return of value stocks versus growth stocks from 1980 to 2014. And any time period you are above the horizontal line up here, you would have been better off in value stocks. So the only time period really when you would have been far better off in growth was during the dot-com bubble as it went up. And when it burst, of course, you would have then been much better off in value. So during this time period, we had an average total return of value of 13.7, growth of 13.2, not a lot of difference, but the volatility of value was much different than growth, much lower, so you would have perhaps slept a lot better in value stocks. Although not while well, the growth stocks were going up during the dot-com bubble, but you would have certainly been happier out after its bursting. So once again, the primary argument for being in value stocks, at least in 2021, is this graph right here. So our current growth value ratio is pretty similar to what happened during the dot-com bubble, above the 1980s recession, below the dot-com bubble, and during the popping of the bubble after both of these two time periods, we had a massive outperformance of value versus growth, perhaps a over outperformance as people became disillusioned with dot-com stocks and went into growth stocks, which then led down here to the housing bubble. So what are good examples of value funds, value stocks to invest in? Um, well, for most individuals, index funds are generally the way to go. If you want to pick individual stocks, you can do that too. And we list a lot of low cost value funds. There's the Invesco S&P 500 per value fund at RPV, the Russell 2000 value index ETF IWN, and we have a whole series of funds from Vanguard, the high dividend index fund, VYM, an international version of that, VYMI, the Vanguard mid cap value index, VOE, the small cap value index, VBR, and the Vanguard value index that includes small cap, mid cap, and large cap of VTV. Places where you can find details um, of these topics would include white papers here from investment strategies on value versus growth. A lot of my graphs came from longtermtrends.net. I have an article on the same topic at Seeking Alpha, and I also have many other um, videos on my YouTube channel on this and other related topics listed at the end. I thank you for watching this video.